Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> So we are here with David Hunter, the owner of Crown Bees, one of the top worldwide experts in native bees. David, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on Reforestation Nation. Hi, my pleasure. One of my favorite passions is, is bees. So there's between 20 and 24,000 species of bees worldwide. So as we look a little further in North America, yeah. there are 4,000 species of bees. None of them make honey. The only honey producing insect came from Europe the honeybee, right, from your, back in, I think, the pilgrim age. So today, uh, my company is focusing on the bees that are native, that spread pollen far better than the honeybee. Huh. When you're using our bees yeah. in farmer fields or in a backyard, people get more food. Can we touch them? Can we see them? Because I want to get a real close-up of, of what these look like, because I think most people have no idea what native bees are, and they just think honeybee. What people think of as social bees, the honeybee, the bumblebee, there's a queen at the top and all this hierarchy of, of honey and hive and all these things that yeah. all go social. Okay. okay. And that's maybe 10% of about 20 to 24,000 species of bees in the world. But when we look at the solitary bees, gentle bees that about 90% of them are bees that don't want to sting and they're phenomenal pollinators. So let's go look at them. So we're in the middle of Oxbow Farms as an organic farm out here in the state of Washington, and these bees are gonna help pollinate summer crops that are all around us. What we're seeing here in this middle of this huge big farm are leafcutter bees that are gentle. Put your hand through here, just wave them out there. It's not that big of a deal. Hey Every bee started off in a little cocoon of leaf bits. Okay, yeah. these the bees are all gone. They've now chosen their own hole. They're gathering pollen from the field, transferring it into their hole, right. lays an egg, and then these guys are sealing that little chamber with just chewed up leaf bits that they've stuffed into there. That's what this is. That's what that is. Oh, that's yeah, leftover really from last year. That, There's yeah. leaf bits. Okay. okay, so that's it. Now we're going to release a lot more. Okay, okay so expect to have a big swarm. I'm excited. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. All right. They're gentle. Okay. Most of them are males, uh, about 60. Ooh, Oops. and I just got, I got bit through these things. These guys are wanting out. Okay, here they come. Okay. Because they're leaf cutters, they can. Okay, so right, as we guys, open these things up. Hey, whoa, whoa. Okay, hey. help me pull the little thing hey, outside. Guys, just don't right. pinch a bee. It's all right. You're free. Here you go, come You're on. Free the bee. Reach whoa. back inside here. Um, oh my God. And we're gonna let all these little guys out there. <laughs> and we're gonna take this. I feel them on my hair. Yep, oh, they're all over your oh, body. Oh, oh. Okay, and we're just, just gonna, in that bag right there, right there and we're just gonna take this little thing here and all these bees are going out. So now this is, this is releasing of the bees. Bees like this are actually phenomenal pollinators, 100 times more efficient at pollinating than honeybee. And that really comes down to these bees have got a hairy body on them. 100 times more efficient. Because a honeybee carries the pollen sticky on their hind legs. And right. It's all headed back to the hive. These guys are carrying it on the bottom of their bellies or dry on their legs and the, the pollen falls off everywhere. So this is a wonderful pollen spreading machine, whereas a honeybee is a uh, pollen taking bee. What role does crown bees play in this? My company focuses on whole nesting bees. We helped set the standards for the mason bee industry years ago. Probably three quarters of the bees are actually nesting the ground. I can't take a shovel full of bees and move it from here to your farm there. The bees have laid eggs in here, and so in this particular hole, I might have maybe between six and 15 eggs that will become bees. I can take them from my yard and move them to your farm. So whether it's wood trays yeah. or it's paper tubes, these are, um, these are paper tubes enrolled, or these are reeds that I can take a reed, open it up, and actually get to the oh. bees on the inside, okay? okay? This is not, I'm putting on a bee suit. Obviously, we don't have one here. I have to, you know, spend a whole bunch of money doing this. You can buy one of these, pop them in your backyard. It's low maintenance, easy to. <laughs> this is actually useful for the native bees, the right. nesting holes. My company has started to find the bees today, and we hope that within 20 years, what that utopia where there's uh, native bees everywhere, yeah. where there's more polyculture, meaning crops that are always in bloom and you're using the bees of that area for the food production. A little less sides yeah. needed. Herbicide, larvicide, mm -hmm. insecticide. I think that's a world I'd want to live in. 
And I, I hope to have my grandchildren. Amen. Thanks for inviting me on your show. Global expert, David Hunter, Crown Bees, ladies and gents. Mason Bee expert worldwide. Look them up, subscribe to Stay Alive. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching Reforestation Nation, where we interview impact leaders about how we can scientifically thrive with nature. And as always, subscribe to Stay Alive by clicking here and watch more content with us right here. Please click and subscribe. This is Martin from Seventh Generation. If there's any green guru, it's him. If he's doing it, I would do it too. Click and subscribe. To stay alive. You we'll think see they're really time. gonna do that? I hope so. Okay. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, Martin. Thank you, sir. Pleasure, Alex.